is not here, you know. We're off to some place called Disney something or other. Well, if you're all just going to stay here, how about listening to my five-part lecture on Elephant Dung and its many uses as clothing liner? <laughs> Let's begin with... Oh, fine. Be that way. Here is adventure. Here is romance. Here is mystery. Tropical rivers silently flowing into the unknown. The unbelievable splendor of exotic flowers. The eerie sound of the jungle. With the eyes that are always watching. This is Adventureland. Welcome, explorers, to Lost Adventure Reviews. I'm Trader Corey, and right now I'm standing at Walt Disney World, Florida. And by the time this video broadcasts, it will be pretty close to Lost Adventure Day. So let's celebrate by riding one of my favorite rides, the Jungle Cruise. Wait time is one and a half months long. Well, looks like I'll be waiting, explorers. Come on this way. Did I mention today is Dapper Day? That's right, the day I'm recording this is Dapper Day. What's Dapper Day, you ask? A day for folks to dress formally to the parks. Or in my case, an excuse to come to the park dressed in my adventure best. But what do I mean by adventure rest? Well, I think it's time to give you all a crash course in how to dress like a proper adventurer while I wait here in line. Let's start from the ground up with our first item, boots. As an adventurer, you want to keep your feet covered when traveling in any part of the world. However, there are many different types of boots and leg coverings to choose from for that classic adventure style. The most common look is the knee-high leather boot. These are easier to find for women nowadays for men, but so are many of the items on this list. To make up for that, there are many different types of hiking boot to choose from. If you want a lighter option with the look of the knee-high, then military spats are for you. Made from canvas, they can really take a beating, but this offers you the chance to wear shoes that are more comfortable for you. Either way, you're prepared to look your best, when you end up stepping on a trap. Now that we have our feet covered, we need to cover our rear with our next item, pants. The best way not to offend your traveling companions and any natives you happen to come across is usually just to wear a pair of pants. And believe me, I know that from experience. The pants that adventurers typically wear are khaki trousers. These come in a variety of styles. For a classic look, Try joppers or riding pants. 
I, for one, like cargo pants, particularly for that extra carrying space. Long pants are great for protecting your legs from insects and underbrush, but as Steve Irwin and Laura Croft have proven time and again, you don't need long pants to tackle anything in the wild. But good pants aren't the only things to help you protect you from the world around you, as this next item proves. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the belt. Whether you choose to wear a belt or suspenders, just wear something to hold up your pants. Wait, is that all I have written? Really? Fine, I'm gonna go off script and add another item to our list. The second belt. Where the first belt or suspenders holds up your pants, the second belt holds everything else. From ammo pouches to gun holsters to bull whips, any kind of tool you need for an adventure, you can put it on your second belt. Best part is, you can wear them anywhere on your body. Around your waist, over your shoulder, there are even utility belts that are being made for thighs and arms. But as Kirk Fogg has shown us, there is no better way to carry your pendant of life than with a pouch on your belt. Now let's talk torso with shirts. Now classic adventurers usually go for the buttoned up look, normally with two breast pockets and epaulets. These are usually known as pilot or camp shirts, and are worn by pretty much every adventure character from Alan Quartermain to Indiana Jones, though modern adventurers have begun wearing Henleys. However, when it comes to women, any tank top will do, unless you're going for the classic look, in which case, it would just be a button-up blouse, and the farther back in time you go, the puffier the sleeves will get. Word of advice to all adventurers out there, you probably don't want to get too attached to your shirt, as it's usually destroyed or gone by the end of your journey. Speaking of the end, this will pretty much wrap up all the things on the list that are necessary for a basic adventure outfit. But stay tuned for part two, where we talk about things that not every adventurer has, but can be just as important. Catch you later, explorers.